You know it's even better than a big backside? An even bigger backside, especially when it's then covered in bananas. I hope you find the concept as appealing as I do. This bustle pad and foundation skirt are the beginnings of my banana bustle dress, which I'm making for Dickens on the Strand, which is happening at the beginning of December. Okay, and yes, I'm doing this in my corset. The construction workers outside have been jackhammering all morning and they just took their lunch break, so I gotta seize the opportunity while they're quiet. <laughs> I'm using the pattern from Laughing Moon, number 1112. This is the Victorian skirt supports pattern I used to make my lobster tail bustle. If you don't have this pattern, Black Snail offers a free downloadable ventilated bustle pad on their website, and Casey from Casey Renee Cosplays has a free one with a ruffle. I've linked to all three in the description below. The construction of this is quite straightforward. First, cut out two pieces of the half moon shape. Then sew right sides together, leaving a three inch gap for turning out. Then turn right sides out and press. Take a grosgrain ribbon the size of your low waist plus some extra and center it on the top of the crescent. The instructions aren't precise about how or where to pin and sew this, so I'm lapping the ribbon over the top of the cushion by about a quarter of an inch. The bustle pad can be worn over top of the bustle or underneath the bustle depending on the shape you wish to achieve. You can also wear this alone as the sole skirt support for anything 1890s. And we're definitely going to be getting up to some 1890s shenanigans early in the new year, so don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't if you're interested in seeing that content. From there, stuff to the thickness of your choosing using the filler of your choice. Pin down the opening and hand sew it shut. The instructions stop there. That's the end of the bustle pad. But this wouldn't be Fantastical Follies if we didn't overcomplicate everything. Let's ventilate it. First, to quilt the outer edge. I measured one and a half inches up and sewed that first. Then I sewed the other lines approximately a quarter of an inch away from each other with questionable success. The ventilated pads I've seen all have large grommets stuck into the center, so let's do that too. I started by marking out where I wanted to put the grommets, but um, all I have are zero and zero zero size, and the equipment for larger ones is like 40 bucks, so we're gonna skip that step and move on to the skirt. Let me know in the comments how you think I should decorate this. A matching banana, a lemon slice, a stripy bumblebee, I can't decide. So very sorry about the construction noise, but they're tearing up my pool for some reason right now. But I did actually commit to making two full bustle gowns in the next three weeks. So this is a speed run and I ain't got time to wait for them to stop. Hopefully you can't hear it or hopefully it's not too bad. Fingers crossed. Tearing up my pool when I'm with you. <laughs> That's a deep cut. Okay, first things first. This pocket is stupid. That is not a pocket. The patterns say that this was based on the detachable Georgian pockets of the earlier era. Very obvious. Why is it so small? We can do better than this, folks. What is this nonsense? Always remember to mark your pattern. The instructions on the overskirt that go on top of the underskirt say that it was made for someone who was five foot six. I'm five foot three. I'm going to make the intelligent assumption that the same is the case for the skirt. So I went ahead and shortened the front by three inches as well as the side gore by three inches. I only shortened the back by two inches to accommodate my backside. And if my assumption ends up to be wrong, no big deal. I'll just add trim. For once, I'm mostly following the suggested layout. I'm using the foundation skirt pattern from MantuaMaker.com for this. I've linked to it in the description below. For the hem facing, you need four or five of these strips. They are 21 inches long and seven inches wide, or three strips of 45 inch wide fabric.
Mark the front and back sides of your gores. Then place them right sides together onto the center front. Pin the center back together. On one side of the gore, mark your placket. Leave the skirt open above the placket line. On the other side, mark the pocket. Pin around the pocket slit. I thought it looked small, so I made mine an inch wider than the pattern call for. RIP spray bottle. There's the pocket hole. That's the easy bit done. Okay, let's deal with the thing I always find confusing, the plackets. Placket. Place the placket right sides together on top of the right side of the opening. And a quick note while I pin, I'm putting the placket on the right hand side and the pocket on the left instead of vice versa like the instructions say, because I'm left-handed. Sew the seam. Iron the seam allowance in toward the skirt. Then turn the placket to the inside and press. Edge finish in the manner of your choosing. My black serge is visible, so I decided to turn it up and sew. On the other side goes the quote unquote false hem piece, but for my sanity, I'm calling it a modesty panel. Fold in half, wrong sides together and iron. On the opposite side from the placket, place right sides together so the edge lines up with the skirt. Sew the seam and edge finish in the manner of your choosing. Fold the modesty panel in half. This is going to extend over the edge of the skirt so that if the skirt gapes, you see it and not your underpinnings. Like my 18th century pockets, this is going to be pockets within a pocket. I particularly utilize the key hook as well as the compartment for my phone, so those are the priority. I traced the outside of my phone on one side of the pocket using heat erasable friction pen. Then I drew an approximation of where I wanted the key fob. With the important stuff out of the way, I drew another pocket in the remaining space because more pockets is better pockets. From there, just measure the size and add seam allowances on all sides. And a little strip for the keychain. Sew this into a tube and use a chopstick to turn it right side out. Sew down the tops of each pocket, then fold the sides in and press. Finish with the bottom. That's what she said. Pin the little pockets onto the big pocket. Check to make sure things fit. Make any adjustments and repin. Check again just to be sure. Because this pocket is sewn into a skirt, I opted for a lighter ring instead of a heavier hook for my key fob. On the other side of the pocket, mark the length of the skirt's hand slit and snip. Place pockets right side together and pin. Thank you to all of my Kofi supporters. Your contributions are a huge help in keeping this channel running. If you find this content helpful and have the means to leave me a one-time tip, I've linked to my page in the description below. Sew along the edges, but leave the pocket inside out. Ta-da! Inceptified. Like the Pirate's Code, the darts are more of a guideline than a rule. Pin them together from the outside in preparation for fitting, as you may need to adjust them to fit your particular shape. I think that the dart placement is quite good. I've got this centered here. I've left a little room for the waistband. The edge of this is almost completely lined up with my side seam. That one's good because that one's already sewn. So I don't think I need to fiddle with those, which is exciting. I was definitely wrong with the length of the skirt. In fact, I looked back at the overskirt pattern and it said specifically that the layout was meant for someone who was 5'6", but there were also instructions on the overskirt that we'll get into when we work on that project. With my modifications, I'm about seven inches too short to hit the end of my petticoat. No big deal, we're gonna add some trim, we're gonna add some pleats, and what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add five inches of pleats with the banana, 
and then another two inches of pleats with the yellow at the very bottom because a lot of the fashion plates I'm seeing have multiple tiers. In addition, I'm gonna put a one inch tuck in my petticoat just to be on the safe side. Before we deal with the hem though, we need to get the rest of the skirt intact first. First, the waistband on the front and sides. Line up the edges with the edge of the skirt and pin. This foundation skirt is appropriate for both the early bustle, natural form, and late bustle periods with modifications. Since we're going for the late bustle period, we next need to deal with the yoke. This ensures a good fit over the aggressive bustles of the mid to late 1880s. The instructions say to place it at the side seams and pin to the waistband. This didn't quite meet at the width I needed it to be, so I started just a few inches in from the side seam instead. Now we'll pleat down the fullness of the back to the yoke. Mark your centers. Old habits die hard, so I'm making an inverted box pleat in the center like my late 18th century gowns, and then pleating inward toward the center back since the instructions don't indicate a direction. Sew the waistband to the front of the skirt and the top of the yoke, and then turn the seam allowance under. Pin your pleated skirt back to the other side of the yoke and stitch. Then hang the skirt up overnight to give the bias a chance to stretch. Because of time, I decided to hem these pleats with the dreaded rolled hem foot. Oh no, not the rolled hem foot. Ah. Welcome to the rainy season in Texas, where sirens go off every five minutes because nobody knows how to drive in the rain in Texas. Pleating together all of that trim took veritably forever and it was tedious and I 100% did not enjoy it. However, I think it is really going to improve the way that this skirt looks, so I don't regret it. And with all of that put together, we can finally go ahead and finish this skirt. To make the addition look intentional, I took two packets of piping and basted them together. To do this successfully in one go, it's imperative that we baste. So place the ruffle at the top of the extension and pin. then machine based. Pin the piping right sides together along the edge of the bottom of the skirt, making sure to pin right against the bottommost cord. Then machine based. When it folds up, the piping will hang over the edge of the outside. Place the edges of your skirt and extender together so that the right side of the ruffle is touching the wrong side of the piping and the raw edges match. Pin on the skirt side very carefully along the baselines of the skirt and the piping. When you sew, you will take the time to follow that basting line exactly so that you don't sew through the edge of your piping. Here's the moment of truth. Oh yeah! Make sure the seam allowance is ironed up toward the skirt. Okay, now we're gonna face the hem. You're supposed to use polished cotton or something similar, but all I have is this infertile yellow poly blend I was going to use for piping before I found a sense. So that's what we're using. Line it up with the bottom of the skirt extension, pin, and sew. Iron up toward the skirt, then flip it up and iron the seam. If you're not covering this up with a ruffle, make sure the outside of the skirt tucks under slightly so the facing doesn't show. Then, because I'm lazy, I finished it by turning in the top and pinning it to the existing seam allowance. Not sure that was a good idea. 
but we're gonna live with it for now. Next to last thing was the bottom ruffle. I pinned it to the very bottom of the skirt, making sure the top was covered by the pink ruffle. And then I sewed it down on the machine. Last final touches were to sew hooks and eyes to the waistband and placket, and then understitch the pocket by hand so it stays neatly inside the skirt. And that's the first part of the banana gown done. I think the ruffles really make the skirt pop, and I'm glad for the happy accident. It also adds a good heft to the bottom hem, something I was really worried about because I'm using such lightweight quilting cotton for this version of the gown. I originally wasn't going to use the bustle pad or make it, but I'm really glad I did because I think it really augments and completes that shelf-like bustle look I was going for. Thanks for watching y'all. I love you and I'll see you in my next video.